British people don't buy lungs because they really don't know what to do with them. The majority of them now either end up in faggots or ends up in a dog mint. The first thing we do in the morning is pick up fresh lungs from the butcher. Uh, we bring them into our lab. We check the tissue is nice and fresh and healthy, hasn't been damaged in transport. We work on how bacteria behave and evolve during very long-lived chronic infections and we're currently working on developing a new model for studying lung infections in cystic fibrosis using sections of pig lung tissue. Cystic fibrosis is perhaps the most common genetic disorder among white people. It's an imbalance in salt and mucus transport in the body and the upshot is that people with cystic fibrosis get very thick, sticky mucus filling their lungs and their airways and that makes them very, very susceptible to bacterial infection. And most people with cystic fibrosis unfortunately die of respiratory failure as a result of long-lived chronic infections. What we really need at the moment is a new model system for studying chronic lung infections and we are using sections of pig's lung tissue and this is great firstly because pigs are very similar to humans we have a lung which is in its structure and its biochemistry and its immunology very similar to a human so it's much better than just looking at a test tube or a petri dish we actually source our lung from a local butcher so this is post-consumer waste from the human food chain so it's a nice ethical model um, it's very much in line with the push to reduce the use of live animals in research and we have an excellent local butcher at the moment that we use who has his own herd of pigs so we have a single source and a single land race of pig for our work. Uh, well this shop it's a pretty amazing little place I, I've been here since I was the age of 12 uh, started working here as a Saturday boy we're traditional English butchers uh, my parents are foreign so I brought a kind of a central European slant to it uh, and yeah, we, we, we've become a, a little butchers with a huge reputation. All my meat comes from two farms, uh, my beef from Roger Jackson, my pigs and my lamb, and that's where the lungs come from, is from a gentleman called Richard and Andrew Both. They're about 12, 15 miles from the shop. So everything we do is outdoor reared, it's free range, uh, and that's where all the lungs come from. I know that that lung's going to be good, or that that animal's going to be good, because you know, it's stamped, it's tattooed, so there's no way around it. Whatever comes into this shop is of my own animals. I have no concerns at all about the lungs being used, whether it's in medical or whether it's in the food process, it would be amazing. And I'd be just happy to be connected with it, really. Uh, if we can do just a little bit to help whoever, fantastic. So this method using the explanted pig lung was originally published in the late 1970s um, and while veterinary scientists have used this method using lungs from rodents in the lab the idea of using the, the pig tissue from the butcher really seems to have, have sort of dropped out of use um, and we think this is a shame because it's got a lot of potential so we're seeing how far we can actually go with this model and what we can do with it. So the next thing for us to do is to really work out what are the advantages and the drawbacks of using this model? What can we do with it and what can't we do with it? So we need to work with our existing collaborators at, at Nottingham and elsewhere to really see what experiments we can do in this system and particularly how well we can use our, our up-to-date imaging facilities to uh, look at the structure of bacterial populations in these lungs.